and, and ANOVA. Reason being that, okay, you are presenting seminar and you use ANOVA. You just use ANOVA. Those people are asking, did, did you check the basic assumptions? Did the data valid? Was it normal in the economic condition? Then you apply in the economic condition. So you have to show, although in your real life data set, it's not possible for you to have a data set that follows all the assumptions 100%. It is not possible. But however, it has to have a, 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 a something, something close to satisfying the assumptions, right? Unlike all those textbook data sets, it is perfect. Reason being that they created it, the software simulated it, but real life situations, it is not possible for you to follow assumptions perfectly. Now, we all know our ANOVA, it helps us to check, to test if there is difference between the mean across two or more groups. Right now, basically, I won't say two or more groups across three or more groups. Right, we can use two if we have two groups, we can use two. But, however, when we are doing our independent sample tests that we had grouping variables one and two grouping variables, this is whenever we have two, two, two grouping variables, we can use the independent sample test. So, whenever it is getting more than two, this independent sample test, they cannot undo it again. Hence, we need our one-way ANOVA. One-way ANOVA can handle three, four, five, and more. We can use it for two as well, right? Now, in SPSS, let me just tell us what, we, what to expect before we run it. Whenever we run this ANOVA, the first things we have to do is to check our assumptions. Basically, what I have here, at least there are six assumptions, but only three need to be checked in the software, right? Now, the next thing we do, run the basic ANOVA test. After the ANOVA, when we run the ANOVA, another test comes with it, which is the post-hoc test. And the post-hoc test is our, the post-hoc test is the one that tests, that helps us to check all those two key tests, uh, LSD, you know, it comes under the post hoc test and everything. We're just going to consider them in the next seven, five to seven minutes. Okay. Now, our, our data set, this is our data set. Now, I want us to quickly have, for example, we have the anemia levels of our respondents, one, two, three, four, four categories, right? And we have our respondents, use um, hemoglobin level. Okay, let's use anemia, let, let's use BMI now, their body mass index, we've not used these things. We have their BMIs measured on the continuous scale, right? Let's, let's assume this is, this, these are the variables we want to use for our one way ANOVA. Now, the very first thing, the very first thing we do is to test the assumptions. Now, the very first assumption is that our dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale. Our dependent variable, which is going to be our BMI, it was a measure on the continuous scale, and this one is on, on the continuous scale. The second assumption is that it must the independent variable must consist of two or more groups. The independent variable, which is our anemia, anemia level, it has two or more groups, it is satisfied. Okay. The third assumption is that the categories of the independent variables must be independent of each other. Like the categories, severe, moderate, mild, they must be independent of each other, right? Now, the fourth assumption is that is the independence of observation. Yes, that is the same thing as what I just said now. The fourth one is that there should be no outlier in a data set. 
Now, let's begin testing now. There must be no outlier in our data set. Now, the fifth one says that the dependent variable should be approximately normal. Real life data set, we cannot have something that is perfectly normal, but it must show that I want to be normal, but due to current, due to, because life is not balanced, you know, I cannot be normal, but it must at least show some sign of normality, okay? And the last one is the homogeneity of variance, like the one we did with the Levens test, homogeneity of variances. Now let's quickly check our assumptions. I'm going to be checking the assumption of no outlier in our data set and the assumptions of normality, okay? Now, for us to do that, we are going to use the descriptive statistics quickly, explore, Okay, explore. Let me reset this. Now, our dependent list is the body mass index, our dependent variable. Now, the factor, the factor is uh, the anemia level from inside here. Now, what we want to check, statistics, we don't need any of this. Plot, the box plot, we want the box plot. I don't need the stem and leaf. We check for the normality plus and test. Continue. Option, leave it as default. But now the display, we don't want the statistics. Let's just cho choose the plots. Um, Sabidex, please, which icon did you press that brought up the outlier? Which outcome did you press? Okay, the plots. What do you mean icon? Come again. Like there was something you clicked that brought a pop-up that Claire was among it. So in I the, couldn't see which one. In the statistics. Okay. But we don't even need it. It is our box plot that we want to use to check for outliers. We don't need to check all these ones. You understand? Once we uncheck, once we click on the plot here, the entire statistics button becomes inactive. Hence, everything inside here, we don't need it. Do you understand? So now, the plot, we choose normality plot with test, okay? And we leave the rest. We don't need stem and leave. We can choose histogram, but we don't need it actual. So, option, leave it. So, okay. All right, we have our guys here. Can we see my output? Are we there with me? Are we on the same page? Hello? Are yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Uh, now, I thought you said, hello. I thought yes? you said you are putting the box plot, but I can't see the box plot here. Yeah, the box plot is actually there. We will scroll down to get it. When we scroll okay. down, we will see the box plot. Okay, okay. These are the box plots. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. So now, the anemia level. Okay, this is just the descriptive statistics. Seven, seven half severe anemia, 59, like that. Now, this guy is the test for normality. The basic assumption says that the, the categorical variables must be normally distributed under each of the dependent um, variable, right? So for body mass index, for severe, now we have two tests for normality here. We have the Como group Smenov, and the Shapiro week. You can use any one to test. However, let's quickly use the Shapiro, right? For Shapiro test, if p-value is greater than 0 0.05, half a, it is normally distributed, right? If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, that means that particular category is normally distributed. And saying this guy, 
seeing these guys like this, this particular for severe, it is greater than 0 0.05. All of them, they are greater than 0 0.05, which implies that it is normal. They are all normally distributed. No, as assumption of normality is not validated. Okay. One other means for us to know if it is normal this way or not is the plot. Now, for a normally distributed um, this thing, the 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 the, the the points must at least almost follow this this line that is plotted at angle 45 degrees, right? It must almost follow it. Okay, it must almost follow. But however, for the plot, it is subjective. I can come and say uh, this thing does not follow the lines. Is not looking straight enough. You may say it's not. I may say it is not normal. Another person can come and say, ah, JP is just small, small deviation. It is normal, right? This plot is subjective. It can be normal to you. It cannot be normal to me. Okay. Also, this is for severe. The next one is for moderate. This one is 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 even is very is very very obvious that. Is normal even with the plot, right? This is for mute, the same thing. This is for um, not anemic. We can see that, but the the test for normality it is not subjective. It will tell us if it is normal or not. So we can see that the the, um, the variables are normally distributed. Okay. All these ones. I don't think we need these ones, right? Now, for the box plot, the box plot is what we use to check. Um, Sabides, can we use Instagram to check if the data is normally distributed? Of course, we can use Instagram. I didn't think we have checked Instagram the other time. I didn't think we've used Instagram as well. The Instagram will plot it for us. And if it follows a bell shape, we know it is normally distributed. So there are many ways to check. Okay? But we just use two ways now. We used the chart, the QQ plot, and we used the Shapiro. Okay, we also have Como Gross men up there as well. So there are many ways to kill a cow. We just used two ways now. Now, for to check outlier, basically from the moderate, we can see that uh it has an outlier here. I don't know if you can see it, 143. Now, it is the, the outlier will not be included in the box. It will, it, will, it will deviate from the box plot, right? So here, we have just one single outlier in the moderate. And remember, I said it's not possible for us to have something exactly perfect, right? So this is not too bad. For us to assume that there's no outlier in the data set. Are we good to go? Yes, we are good to go. So now, having checked the assumptions, now the next assumption that we are going to check is the homogeneity of variances. And that one is going to come alongside with the analysis of variance, with the ANOVA test itself. We can run it differently. But to save our time, let's have it together with the ANOVA test. Now, in our, we can now run our ANOVA. Compare means one way ANOVA. We are using we are using body mass index as our dependent list and um, anemia level as the factor. Now. For, for the contrast, leave it as it is. You don't have to check anything here. However, the post hoc test, we have a lot of post hoc tests here for us. Now, we have LSD. I know we are very familiar with LSD. We are familiar with Shefe. We are familiar with Duncan's test, Tuki test, and which other one are we familiar with? 
But now let's choose the two keys first. Two key. You can choose more than you can choose more than one. So, but here, these are for the equal variances assumed. We assume that the variances are equal, right? So let's choose two key. Okay. Option. Descriptive statistics. Yes, let's have it. Over United of variance test. Let's have it to have our levels test. But if we already assume it is equal, we can leave it to save our time. Now, this Welch test here, if we know, if we have known that our variances are not equal, we choose this test. Okay? However, since we assume that our variances are equal, let's leave it. If you want the means plot, you can choose it as well, but it's not quite necessary. So, fix a random effect, you don't need it as well. Okay. Now, okay. All right. So, we now have our one way ANOVA. Now, this is the descriptive statistics. We checked for it. If you need any information, you can check this table. It will give you the descriptive statistics. The, the ANOVA itself, the ANOVA table itself, remember, our null hypothesis for ANOVA is that the mean of all the treatment groups are equal. And the decision rule is to reject H0 if p value is less than alpha, right? Reject H0 if p value is less than alpha. Here, are we rejecting or not rejecting? Somebody, please. So I will know if you are still with me. Hello? Yeah, the p value is greater than alpha, so we, are not we do not reject. Yes, thank you, sir. So we do not reject. Hence, the treatment means are equal. Okay, so what this implies is that we don't have any need for our post hoc test. Because what was what the what is the post hoc test is to is because if 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 there is difference between one or two groups, the post hoc test. Is the one that will be able to tell us where the difference is located, particularly. You understand? So, in us, are they being this guy is less than half hour, and we reject H naught? We are now going to come to our post hoc test to check for which one is particularly different from each other. Okay? But since that, since the H, since the uh, since we do not reject H0, if we come here to check, we are going to see that none of them, none of them is different from each other. Let's quickly look at it. Let's quickly look at it. If p value is less than, if p value is less than half a, on for this table now, if p value is less than half a, it shows that they are different from each other. It shows that the mean are different from each other. Look at the p values. Look at the p values. None of them is less. They are all greater than half. It shows that not. It shows that this guy and this guy, they are not different from each other. So, but are they being this one? I don't think we have rejected H not here. If we come here, we will see one or two of them that will be different from each other. So on this note, we um, any question please before we call it a night. Are we still on the same page, please? Yes, we are on the same page. I don't have any question. All right, all right. Thank you very much. So by then we, we are now on the same page, sir. No question. All right, thank you very much. As I mean, I'm going to look at binary logistic regression using using um, SPSS. 
and I bet you it's something you like, you enjoy, really, really, you enjoy the class. And um, on this note, I want to appreciate you for your cooperation. I want to appreciate you for your time. I'm very sorry it took us this very long um, hour. I hope we've learned one or two things tonight. So, Mr. Oshawa, I'm handing over to you. Thank you very much, and say good night.